you know, I always thought when I lived in New York City, you know, the Wall Street was like the most corrupt industry. And then I moved to San Francisco and I thought, you know, Silicon Valley might be the most corrupt. And then I stumbled on healthcare and it's like, oh my God. And, and one of the reasons healthcare is like corruption on steroids is because you got Wall Street influence, you've got that private the equity influence that, as you know, wants to do away with all of you. You know, they, they think that somebody can go online and study medicine and, you know, you know, a couple of hours, okay, you can, you can diagnose. So it's, it's eye-opening. It was eye-opening to me. And I think it's a poor reflection on American society that this could even happen. You know, these MBAs that are running hospitals and using metrics, it's just wrong. And um, I read your book and you connected something to me that in my mind that I hadn't appreciated before, that getting rid of doctors is um, one of the strategies that we don't need somebody with uh, 15,000 hours of training. We could get somebody with a lot less training to do the job. The media today is a lagging, become a lagging indicator. The problems unfolding, what's happening in healthcare, and you know, a few years from now, there's going to be a lot of people dying. And, you know, it's and someone's going to wake up and they're going to do this story like, "Oh my God, do you know what they did?" And but that's after the fact. And I, I think good journalism is like warning people that this is happening before it happens, rather than say, let me give you a 10,000 words feature about how healthcare ended up the way it did. It, you know, it just doesn't do any good. That's what I've learned, is that doctors are, have become employees and they function as employees. They, they're afraid to speak up and rightfully so, I just saw, I think it was an internist, but it might have been cardiologist that is suing in Indiana that the, you know, Indiana healthcare system, healthcare company there has such a monopoly that, you know, they can only refer patients within the monopoly. And, you know, so if you, you start making waves, you know, you get blackballed and you're, you're, you're out of business and, and that's just wrong. And, and any, any kind of concentration of power, especially, you know, you're talking a lot of money in healthcare. I mean, that's a lot of money that's not being regulated and watched and letting these hospitals get bigger. You know, bigger is not better. And it's, and it's there's study after study showing that when hospitals merge, quality of patient care goes down and costs go up. There's no, the only benefit to a hospital merger is to the CEO and to the investment bankers that can sell the deal. But there's no other benefit to anybody else. Well, I think your book is a great first start. There's a real problem in America is that the country's been dumbed down. You know, it's like, you know, I saw a story, it was in Kansas, you know, Overland, Kansas. I, I don't know if you guys saw it, that, you know, it was the KKR company that provides emergency room physicians and some physician sued them uh, for not staffing properly. And he won like $25 million. And, and the reporter just wrote the story straight. Here's a doctor that won $25 million for understaffing the hospital for an emergency room. And it's like, are you kidding me? Well, if they were understaffed, what about the emergencies that came in, you know? Somebody comes in in a car accident, there's only one doctor, and the, and the reporter didn't think to follow up. And he didn't think to follow up, well, why are they outsourcing the emergency doctors? And, you know, it's the quality of journalism in this country has really gone down, and particularly on the local level. I'm quite passionate and what I'm disappointed in, I don't know the politics of the American Medical Association, but like your book should be in the waiting room of every doctor, like every family practice guy, 
and woman in the country. It should be like right there. And it should be on the AMA's website. This is an example when you like let PR people do your branding. So, you know, the physician assistants, they want to now call, they hired the firm and they call it a branding firm. It was actually a PR firm. And, you know, they probably paid like as much as like 500,000 for this to come up with the name physician associate. And frankly, I don't think there's that much of a difference, you know, maybe associate, okay, but obviously it's not a physician. But like the response that the AMA gave to that was so lame, you know, it's like, I would have given, you know, a response that said something to the effect was that, you know, we our tolerance with physician assistants and nurse practitioners trying to fashion themselves as doctors has worn thin. You know, if they wanna if they want to provide the quality of care that doctors provide and let them go to medical school, you know, something like that. And and they would have dropped it, you know, because the one thing that they didn't anticipate, and maybe correctly so, that the AMA or the you know, physicians might come back with a vengeance. Like this might wake up the industry. Like, do we really want to test it? And I thought the AMA response was very lame. And I think doctors are making a mistake. But you guys touched on it. You know, you used the same analogy that I was using. So great minds think alike, you know, the airplane analogy. You know, you get on a plane today, you know, that. You, all of us could probably learn to fly a plane within six months, you know, just to basically get it up and get it down. It's all, you know, you're basically just reading the instruments, but when those instruments go faulty, you got to know how to bring down the plane the old fashioned way. And, you know, the miracle with uh, the U S air flight, you know, in the East river was that, that guy was a veteran military pilot. He knew how to fly planes under extreme circumstances. You know, pilots today don't come out of the military anymore, the commercial pilots. And, you know, it's, it's the same with anesthesiology. It's like when something goes wrong, you need uh, Captain Scully.